Jay and Sam, our beloved protagonists, were approaching the couch, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and ready to start their day. What the heck? We're supposed to be doing Journey to the North. We gotta get uh, to the Last Hope. No, 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 no. You said we've been doing too much Andor, we've been doing too much Legacy Dragonhold lately, so what the hell is this? I have no clue what the heck that is. They said in confusion. No, no, you're trying to set me up or something? I'm not trying to set you up. We talked about doing Fog of Love and something later on, but uh, we weren't supposed to be doing this. Like, who, who put this here? As the two proceeded to bicker, they realized that they had forgotten about their special guest of the day. Did you hear something? I heard something. Oh, it's our collaboration today! Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cyberbard himself! Hey everybody, it's the Cyberbard, and welcome to an episode of Dice and Dragons, where today we are going to play some Legacy of Dragonhold. Come here, you. Oh, oh. Yeah. This couch really makes it feel like a creepy dungeon in here. I need a bigger couch. You really need a bigger couch. You do, but it's so, okay. We're cozy, we're comfy, and we're ready to play some yes. Legacy of Dragonhold. So what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be doing a playthrough of the first adventure to New Roads. And just so that you guys meet the characters, we're going to cut shortly and we're going to do some character introduction videos. So stay tuned and hope you guys like the video. So, today I'm going to be playing Rygar, the Hearings Catfolk. Now, Rygar is a Wildlander, and since this is a character introduction, let's just tell you a little bit about him. So, Rygar's village was destroyed when he was young, about 10 years old. Since then, he journeyed into the wilds and was just pretty much living by himself, learning how to survive in the wilds, until he ventured near the town of Narakal. And he encountered some demons, and that's where he encountered the party that uh, he will be adventuring with today. And since then, they have been close friends. Rygar actually has not seen them in quite some time. He went back to the wild after uh, their adventure. Now, I just want to describe a little bit uh, of the character. So, Rygar is a gray and black catfolk. He has golden eyes that really helps him being stealthy uh, at night. And he is not very comfortable around people. The only people that he really trusts are his adventuring party, due to the fact that he's been on his own for about the last uh, 29 years. And we're going to be joining him and his compatriots as they venture towards Dragonhold Village to help one of their good friends. So you know my character, guys. It's Tammy Cruz, the Burrow Gnome. And you saw me create the character in the preceding video. Uh, you know her as the Skyfighter pilot. Dragon pilot. Cyber Bard is right. I would like to be the dragon pilot. There are still no planes. Uh, and it'll be kind of cool, like LS Skyrim. So that being said, she is that hometown girl, extremely business savvy, uh, wanted to be an actor, came up as an apothecary instead, and she actually finds the next character that is going to be presented to you quite dreamy. Stay tuned to find out more. Cyberbard here, and I am the third character of our little ragtag group, and today I will be playing a bard, funny how that is, by the name of creatively called Kyber Baird. You get it. So Kyber, I'm going to begin by explaining to you the elements of the character sheet for those of you who have not seen Sam's previous video. So there are certain elements that make up each of the characters. You have a background or origin, however you want to call it. You have your personality and ideals, and you have your physical description. This is all flavor, of course, but we're all about the flavor here at Dyson Dragons. So let's start with the background. So Kyber Barrett is just a small town bard living in a lonely world. He took the midnight carriage going anywhere after graduating from the Bardic College, of course. He hangs around Nerakal when he isn't out adventuring. He at one point hooked up with Tammy and it was a little awkward. Yeah, we'll get into that later. <sighs> It was one time, and I'd been drinking Orcish Moonshine. One time! That's it! I didn't want to meet her parents. It was one time. As far as personality and ideals, Kyber is a bright-eyed and pleasant adventurer. He's a consummate entertainer. He loves an audience and doesn't pass up an opportunity to make the day better for those around him. Kyber, it should be known, can be exceedingly 
filthy when the mood strikes him. He is a dirty little man. Oh, Kyber's filthy. In a good way. Listen, let me put it this way. I have performance as a skill, if you know what I mean. As far as physical description goes, he's a comely and charismatic man, breaking hearts and taking names, tall, agile, dark of hair and light of eye. Picture a less insufferable Bono without the ravages of time. So that's who I'll be playing today. You'll find more about Kyber in the video itself. Keep watching. So, you've met the characters, and we're going to be going on an adventure. So our adventuring party has not seen each other for several years. We are now getting together to help our friend Salise, who has taken up tutoring in Dragon Old Village. And as we always do here at Dice and Dragons, we like to grab our drinks. And this time we're going to be grabbing our buddies. And we're going to Dragon Old Village. Cheers. Cheers. Boys. Cheers. Enjoy. So, here we go. We're adventuring down new roads to Dragon Holt Village. And for those of you that do not know how to play the game and would like to get a full overview of the game, just take a look somewhere up here. You will find the card that will direct you to our previous videos. And with that, the Cyber Bard is going to take it away. Actually, before we do that, Sam, you got something to add? Well, I need to get into character because I'm, well, Tammy Cruz, so... Excuse me, gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, much better. I'm All just right. glad right. someone's not named Goose. All oh, right. God. Come on, Maverick, let's go. As long as he doesn't show us where the wild goose goes. All right. So... No Iceman either. I will be your narrator for today. And for those of you who are not familiar with the game, it is more or less a choose-your-own-adventure game. So picture those old choose-your-own-adventure books and add in elements of RPGs such as Dungeons & Dragons. So we're going to go over the elements of the game and how it's played as we go through. I'm going to start the narration. Let's rock and roll. So it says here, you slump down on the wooden bench, stretching your legs. You have been traveling for nearly a week now towards a small village called Dragonholt. Your journey is at the request of Salise, a former adventuring companion and friend who has since found her calling as a tutor to the children of Countess Regina Fairfax, Lady of Dragonholt. You take a moment to reread the letter. Well, <clears throat> my friend, I pray this letter, spelled wrong, finds you in good health for Ockney. I think she means once. Because I need you to travel. As you might have heard, I have taken, spelt wrong, a position as a tutor in the household of Lady Regina Fairfax, Countess of Dragonholt, just outside the village. Okay, there's a lot of spelling errors in this. Mm -hmm. I elected to take this position because I hoped for some peace and quiet after that business in Nerikal. That was some tough business. It was. Mm -hmm. It was very, very tough. Yeah. It got so awkward after Nerikal, that's when we went back to the woods. Had I known what my future held, I would have done something else entirely. Lady Regina's three children are more than livelily enough to deny me anything resembling peace or quiet. Even now that they are mainly grown, I remain very busy. But I did not write you to complain about my lot in life. As you know, I never complain, even when the so-called dwarven wine is very obviously an inferior human vintage. Gotta hate when the cheap bars do that. It's usually the dive bars, though. Yeah, at least they didn't try to pass it off as Orcish Scred. Well, Orcish Scred is pretty good. No? No? I don't know. All right. Where was this? Again. Or when my very favorite <laughs> cloak, the Ble one, blue, but Ble is kind of French. Ble is a color. Ble is a color. The Ble one is stained by some dr uh, drunken lush spilling his wine Elves should really stay out of human taverns. They can't handle their wine. They cannot. But I write to you because I fear something sinister is at work here in Dragonholt, and I require your assistance. I dare not say more openly, as I think it likely this message will be intercepted. I can trust no one here to help me with this matter. After that business in Ericol, I have only you and a small handful of other allies left. Please help me. There is more at stake than you know. Sillies. 
Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And also interesting to note that there is something written in the back which says, please refer to her first letter. But it's odd, as we did not receive anything else. Yep. So, Cyberbond will now continue with the story. Yes. And let it be known that there's a puzzle involved here, but rather than spoil it for you, we'll simply skip over that portion and suffice it to say that Sam understands, Jay understands, and I understand. We'll move along, and we'll let you have the pleasure of sorting out that puzzle. So you are uncertain why Selyse has summoned you to Dragonholt. Her letter is strange, speaking only of a vague threat that requires your assistance. And although you are sure the letter was written in her hand, the message contains several details that you find uncharacteristic of the elf you adventured with in the past. You had never known Selyse to drink dwarven wine, and you would swear she always wore a green cloak. I mean, how many times did we go to the bar with her, and I tried to get her to drink the dwarven wine, she just wouldn't do it. And she did look quite fetching in green, I must admit. That's true, she never wore bleh. Never wore bleh. Never yeah. bleh. It is not unthinkable that our preferences have changed over the years, but something about the way the message is written makes you feel there is more to the letter than is obvious. Aha. Uh -huh. Wah, wah, wah. You have always known Celise to be excessively proper in her speaking. She must have been in a panic while writing to have produced so many spelling errors. Even more alarming is the brief note on the back of the letter, as was pointed out. You had not received any word from Celise before this one. Could she have sent another letter that was intercepted as she had feared? Regardless of the vagueness of her request, you owe Celise at least this much after that business in Naracol. As the tutor in the employ of a countess, she may be in a position to reward you handsomely for any assistance you can render. We do like treasure and rewards, especially after that business in Naracol. There was just a lot of demons and not enough treasure. I just like gold. Yeah, gold is good. Yeah. Excuse me, is this road the fastest way to Dragonholt? You look up from the letter to see Mariam, a gnome merchant you've been traveling with, talking to another traveler and pointing down a path towards a forbidding-looking forest. I never thought gnomes could look alike until I saw Tammy and Mariam. It's so confusing, especially at night. She's my sister from another mister. Aye, if you're going to Dragonholt, you'll have to go through Eventide Forest. Ain't no way around it. About a day's travel straight through. Mariam thanks the traveler, and he continues on his way in the direction opposite the forest. You fold the letter and stow it away before standing. It won't do to rest for too long. You sling your baggage over your shoulder and prepare to resume your travels. Mariam turns to face you. Well, what are we waiting for? If that's the road to Dragonholt, let's be off. Mariam has been traveling with you for some three days now. Like you, she is traveling to Dragonholt, and, as she put it when you met, the more the merrier. We should proceed with caution, calls Braxton from behind you. The orc woman hefts Mariam's bag off the ground where the gnome had left it and drops into Mariam's open arms. A cautious orc. What do you guys think of that? Well, th this is the uh, runebound universe, so in this case, orcs are actually functional members of society. Huh. Interesting. So it's not like Warhammer 40k, where they're screaming about wah and blowing themselves up. No, and it's not like Lord of the Rings, where they're basically decrepit, fallen, evil elves. Are they still ugly as hell, or...? Probably. Probably. I mean, it depends, though. Some people like ugly things. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I mean, people like Kim Kardashian, but I don't know. Let's continue. Rumor has it there are bandits who make camp in these woods. We should watch our backs as we pass through. Since meeting Mariam and the Orc Knight Errant, you have found Braxton to be the more cautious of the pair by a wide margin. As far as you can tell, Mariam has hired Braxton for protection, but at times the Orc seems to dote on the gnome more than a bodyguard would. Oh, they're in love. Or, you know, maybe... Something else. It doesn't have instinct. to be, be love. Motherly instinct is still kind of love. You see, th this is why I had to get away for a few years after an era call. It got real weird. Awkward. Okay. <laughs> you nod in agreement at Braxton's comment. With a last fleeting glance at the crossroads signpost, you follow after the energetic gnome who has already started off toward Eventide Forest. Ooh. And it's at this point that we come to 
decision making, which is one of the mechanics of this particular game. So we have three options now. The first option, let's make some headway before we lose the light. The second option, what else have you heard about these bandits? And the third, stick close, Mariam. It's dangerous to get separated. So what do you think? Well, as Rygar is a loner and does not have a lot of friends, he wants to make some headway before we lose the light. He wants to get to Selyse because clearly she's in trouble. And even though I haven't seen her in a few years, I don't have many friends and I will do anything to help like one of the only friends I got on this planet. He's a seasoned traveler, right? Yes, he is. So I'm not worried. Being okay. a wildlander, survival, endurance, I can go on for a long time. I'm used to being in the woods at night. Doesn't Excellent. bother me. Sammy? Well, as Tammy would want her boo to decide. Oh, please don't call me that. All right. So, being a little bit reckless, Kyber would probably want to move it along quickly as well. So, he is going to be going with Rygar and saying, let's make some headway before we lose the light. So, I will then spend my activation token, meaning that Rygar's decision has been taken, and I will not get the opportunity to make another decision until all other players have at least made a decision that requires them to spend their activation token. Correct. So when you make a decision, you flip your token, and then before you can act again, the other members of your party must each make a decision themselves and flip their token, at which point you can start the cycle anew, and in this case you can change the order by which you do things. So it's about action management. Mm -hmm. So Rygar has taken one for the team, You've made the first choice. Let's continue. And now we are going to skip ahead to entry 2883 to proceed with the adventure. And there you go. It's just like those choose your own adventure books. You know, flip to page 43. You have been eaten by wolves. The end. I got killed by space vampires. I ended up getting Jensen out of airlock. That was real fun. Yes. How the wolves were in space, we'll never know. But let's proceed. <laughs> so... We were going to go with 2883. Yes. There we are. Farther down the road, Mariam turns to call out, Hurry along, Braxton, or you'll be left behind. You hustle forward to catch up to the gnome and keep pace with her. Braxton falls in just behind you. I understand your enthusiasm, but we must take our time once we enter the forest, or we may become lost. And now it tells you to mark story point 01. Completed. Sorry. Perfect. It's important to do. Yes. Those story points will come up later on in the game, exactly. whether it is in this adventure or a future adventure, and it will limit or expand your options as you play through Legacy of Dragon Hole. Mm -hmm. That brings us to another decision. This decision has two options. The first one being... We'll be fine as long as we stick to the road. Option number two. Do the rumors about bandits have any merit? So, we're the ones who will be making the final choice here. What do you think we should do, Sammy? So, as Tammy, she likes adventure, so I would want to know more about the bandits. Okay. What do you think, Rygar? Well... I'm more concerned with moving on, so I'm not as concerned with learning about the bandits. I just want to get to Selyse's side as soon as possible. Our friend's in danger, and that's all that matters. Kyber, being the inquisitive type, is likely to go with Tammy's choice on this one. So we are going to go there. Will Tammy be taking the action? I will take the action, and we're going to find out more about these bandit rumors. Fantastic. I hope so, it's useful information. Me too. I hope so as well. And this will bring us to entry 3298. Actually, right up there. That's fantastic. Very simple. So, as you can see, Sammy, or Tammy, has been noting down the entry markers as we play the game. Now, the reason for that is, if you need to take a break, if something weird happens while you're filming your video... It's a great way for us to be able to pick back up and continue on, on your adventure. And it's great when you're playing just with family and friends because, as you know, sometimes you just got to take a break. All right. 
So to entry 3298, it reads as follows. Braxton strides beside you, keeping an ever-watchful eye on her eager companion. Not much. I've just heard from some travelers that a number of caravans have been ambushed while passing through. Valuable goods were taken, but the merchants and traders have been mostly unharmed. Now we mark story point R6. Done. And we're going to read entry 1340. So we're taking it back to page one. Entry 1340. As you speak with your traveling companions, small trees begin to dot the terrain around you. Tall grass gives way to brush, and you soon find yourself at the edge of the forest. Time passes. So the importance with regards to the passage of time is that it will either limit or decide what decision you may make. So as you're playing the game, you may have something that will say if three or four time has passed, read this marker. If there has been less time that has passed, you can then decide which entry you would like to read. So marking it down is very important because it does absolutely affect the decisions that are available to you while you play the game. Very good. Mm-hmm. So yes, it's important to note it down because in the mechanics of the game, some effects in future entries will reference how much time has passed or if a specific amount of time has passed, which is why it's important to be diligent in recording this. It does have an impact. As you walk, you take the chance to become better acquainted with your fellow travelers. Now, what's interesting about the next decision is that both of them state this option (coughs) does not exhaust your activation token. So, I need to take an action, but I will still be able to maintain my little token here for the next case. Exactly. Rygar and Tammy are not allowed to make any decision because we've already spent our activation token, which actually lets Kyber make potentially two or more decisions, depending on how the story goes. Correct. The ball's in Kyber's court, and Kyber is going to choose, in this case, to ask Braxton what she plans to do in Dragonhold. Kyber is curious about this strange, cautious orc. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. So it says, mark story point N3. Doing it right now. And we are going to go to entry 4945. And as we go to entry 4945, we're just going to take a quick cut. We're going to grab a quick break, just like we talked about. And we'll be right back. And we're back. So, the Cyber Guard is going to pick up with the story of Tanu Rhodes. All right. So let's continue with entry 4945. Braxton smiles gently, nodding her head in Mariam's direction. I will continue to protect our friend, Mariam, for as long as she requires my services. As you may have noticed, looking after her does not leave me much time for anything else. I resemble that remark, calls Mariam. After that, I am not certain. I think that's what she meant, but I don't think she's terribly bright. (laughs) She resembles the remark. All right, then. After that, I am not certain. I am not certain what to do with myself before meeting Mariam. I suppose I will travel to a larger city and try to find employment. Now, I have a number of choices that I can make here. The first is ask Braxton about her past adventures. Second, ask Braxton how she met Mariam. Tell Braxton about your past adventures. This is interesting because it requires a deception or performance skill both of which I have. I can ask Braxton which lord she served, which requires empathy or history, both of which I have. I can ask Braxton about her military training, which requires history or military. I have history. Or I can show Braxton how to foil slate of hand, which requires awareness or thievery, neither of which I have. So what do you guys think I should do? I'm interested uh, in... Braxton's past, or more about her, her relationship with Miriam. Rygar is fascinated by interpersonal mm-hmm. relationships. Being on my own in the woods for the mm-hmm. last, for most of the last 20 or so years is, uh, I always find human interaction or mm-hmm. anyone's interaction, because not just humans, very interesting. Okay. I think you're a bard. I think y'all want to hear one of your stories and one of your fabricated tales. 
I think so too. Yeah. I think Kyber is a little bit of a uh, show off. A show off. And so we're going to go with uh, telling Braxton about our past adventures because, as you know, it's all about us. It's, it's all about us. So we are going to read entry 1984. <laughs> There we are. So, Braxton listens to your tales of your exploits politely, nodding at the appropriate points, and asking a handful of clarifying questions. I can tell you're quite accomplished, she says. Miriam and I are lucky to be traveling with you. You get the distinct impression that she is humoring you. Mark story points S2 and W3. If... Two or more time has passed, we do something. Otherwise, we do something else. But only one time has passed. Correct. Yes. Very well. We will read entry 7616. And we refresh our activation tokens. Yes. Indeed. So now we can all act again, and we can change up the order, depending on what we need. So 7616. One six. So, for example, if the next set of decisions maybe has a skill that would be better for Rygar or Tammy, we would then most likely take the lead in that situation. Excellent. You continue down the road, and the sky overhead is soon obscured by the foliage of the forest canopy. Streams of sunlight dance around you as a gentle breeze shakes the leafy ceiling. Mariam skips forward and spins through the shafts of light, smiling and laughing. It would be best if you stayed close. Becoming lost in the woods is all too common for those not accustomed to traveling without the sun or moon to guide them. Despite the orc's warning, Braxton makes no additional effort to keep pace with the playful gnome. The next one says, if story point N3 is marked. Did we mark N3? Yes, we did. We read entry 43. Eight, nine. Otherwise, we would have had a different choice. You change the subject, electing to ask Braxton what she knows about Dragonholt. I've never been to Dragonholt myself, says Braxton. Lord Collar's lands were west of here, so I never had occasion to visit. I did hear that the village has a fine inn. You heard that from me, from me calls Marion. Miriam's aunt runs the place, said Braxton with a smile. Apart from that, I think the place is rather unremarkable. A small collection of houses surrounded by farms and orchards. She frowns and drums her fingers on the hilt of her sword, looking all around. Well, there was that one story about a brave hero who could freeze a dragon's flames in its throat. But I think that was just a story. Braxton lapses into a comfortable silence for some time. We have three choices now. Ask Braxton about her family, ask Braxton about orcs, or leave Braxton to her thoughts. So do we bother her, or do we leave her alone? What do you think? I, don't know, I, th I think Kyber might ask her about the orcs, since he was so confused by uh, how well-spoken she was. Uh, mm -hmm. See, Rygar is perfectly fine traveling and leaving her in peace. What do you think, Tammy? Well, I'm the hometown girl. I want to make sure that nothing is bothering her, so I would also like to know uh, about Braxton, maybe her family. Okay, so two for nosiness, and Kyber wouldn't really have any particular preference as far as being nosy. Suffice it to say that he is nosy. So <laughs> Kyber is going to take one here, and he is going to ask Braxton about her family. So cool. Let's flip that token, and we're going to read entry 2062. I haven't seen them in years, she says. My brothers were not happy about me abandoning them to take service with Lord Collar. But to be honest, I had to get away. After our father died, my brothers became more and more domineering. They wouldn't let my mother and me do anything without their permission. That's um, never good. It's no. terrible. It's disgusting. Disgusting behavior. They wouldn't let my mother and me do anything without their permission. I was going on long hunting trips just to avoid them. It was on one of those trips that I met Lord Collar. She glances up at the forest canopy as if to see her brothers there. 
It's funny, but now that I'm grown and a knight, I miss them. I'd like to see them again, as equals. I'd like to meet them too, calls Miriam. Maybe break all their kneecaps. <laughs> Jesus. It's a feisty gnome. Oh, yeah. Kind of reminds me of Tammy. You know. No. <laughs> nope. Miriam doesn't like my brothers, explains Braxton, even though she doesn't know anything about them. They were awful to you, says Miriam. That's all I need to know. Okay. If two or more time has passed, which it hasn't, we go to one place. Otherwise, <coughs> we read entry 3859. 3859. Eventide Forest is an intimidating landmark, and you can see why Braxton was concerned. Within an hour of entering the forest, the thin young trees give way to ancient gnarled guardians. The light, leafy canopy transforms into an oppressive shroud that cloaks the road in darkness, even during the most sunny of days. Time passes. Marked. Yep, so keep going. In the darkness of Eventide Forest, a chilling stillness reigns, and even bird songs are drowned out by silence. You continue onward, Mariam's unusual banter quieted by her new mood, one part fascination and one part fear. Braxton keeps an ever-vigilant eye on the surroundings, her hand now resting on the pommel of the blade at her waist. You soon come to a stop when you catch up to Mariam. She is glancing down what appears to be a small game trail that branches away from the main road. Up ahead... You see that a number of fallen trees are blocking your path. An old crossroads signpost marks the split, but the wood is too rotted and the writing is indecipherable. What do we do now? It doesn't seem like Lady Regina has been alerted yet. Braxton strains to look over the fallen trees. We could clear the road ourselves or send word to Lady Regina once we reach Dragonholt. We could try this trail, offers Merriam. Maybe it connects to the main road on the other side. So, three options. We can scout along the game trail and report back, climb over the trees and continue on the main road, or clear the road of debris before continuing. What do you think? I'm perfectly able of scouting ahead and reporting back. That's what I do. I spend all my time in the woods. So... We have an orc. We can use her to clear out the road, and it is a main road, so that would be good for business, and I am very business savvy. Cunning Kyber looks at the, at the logs blocking the path and thinks, maybe this is a trap set by the bandits to delay us or split us up. Hmm. What do you think? It could, could be. be. It could be, but I, I'm uncertain. I, I can definitely scout ahead, but... Uh, I'd like to hear what Tammy would, uh, would like to do again when she takes that into consideration. Well, we have essentially one for scouting ahead or one for maybe removing the logs. Do we flip a coin? Removing the logs is a good deed. The question is, do we feel like performing a good deed? Don't forget, we can skip removing the logs entirely and simply climb over them. Yeah, but... So, what do you want I to I would do? scout ahead rather than clearing the logs. Go for it. I will right. scout ahead. And now we read entry 5822. So, we're going to get set up for 5822. We're just going to take a quick cut and we will be right back. Refill our beverages. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're back. Let's continue on with entry 5822. We are scouting ahead. Correct. You follow the trail away from the main road, ducking under low hanging branches and hopping over muddy puddles. The trail winds back and forth, and you soon lose your bearings. As you scramble over a particularly steep slope, the soft earth gives way, and you tumble head over heels until you come to a stop at the base of a tree. Oof. Now, it says here, if you do not have agility, awareness, or survival, you lose three stamina. Does Rygar have any of those skills? Rygar has agility, awareness, and survival. So, I'm very good. This is what I do all day long. Fantastic. And so we continue. You crawl back to your feet and continue on, revol resolving to be more careful. After some time, you rejoin the main road, well past the deadfall that blocked it. You turn back and, being certain to mark your route this time, rejoin the others. Time passes. 
Mark story point K3, please. Done. You and your traveling companions make your way along the game trail and continue your journey along the main road. Read entry 8557. Let's move it along. There we are. After following the winding road for what feels like hours, you begin to fear that you are traveling in circles. Of course we are. <laughs> Just as you're about to suggest turning back, Miriam calls out from beyond the next bend. There's a clearing up here! As you round the bend, you see Miriam staring up at a single massive tree that stands alone in the center of a clearing some 20 paces across. Although the great oak's canopy is just as thick as anywhere else in the forest, its branches reach well above the tops of the surrounding trees, affording you a view of the sky at the edges of the clearing. Now, if three or more time has passed, are we there? Yes, we are. Read entry 3549. You are all eaten by wolves. Damn it! No. <laughs> this is not a choose your own adventure. Quite. 3549. There we are. It's already night. No wonder I feel so tired. Miriam mutters with a large yawn. Sure enough, when you look up, you see stars sparkling brightly in the vast emptiness of the night sky. You know how brilliant they seem so far from the torchlight of the city. At the edges of the clearing, several paths cut through the dense trees, leading away from the great oak in different directions. Only a few seem well-traveled, but none are marked by signs. Braxton, too, has noticed the myriad options for further travel. We should get our bearings before making camp for the night. Miriam rolls her eyes at Braxton's suggestion. We can use the sun as our guide in the morning. I'm going to sleep. With that, she takes out a bedroll and makes camp at the base of the great oak. And there it comes the choices. So the first one says, Determine your heading by observing the stars. Requires arcana, devotion, or survival. Sammy has arcana, so that's not a bad option. Convince Miriam to read the stars before she sleeps, which requires empathy or persuasion. Climb the great oak to look for a landmark, which requires agility or athletics. Or leave the navigation to Braxton and turn in for the night. So, what do you think we should do? It would be fun to send Braxton to, to kind of do the work, but I kind of want to use my Arcana skill. All right, then. Yeah. So, flip your token, and we are going to reset, as we have all acted. So, Tammy is going to... Try to read the stars. That's pretty cool. I just reflipped Tammy's token because she's made her decision, Thank and now Perfect. we are all able to act again. That brings us to entry 2172. You gaze up at the stars, walking a slow circle around the great tree in the clearing center to get a better view. You take your bearings from the constellations and find the Tariana's star. You are now confident you know which way to go to reach Dragonhold. Hooray! Good job, Tammy. Excellent work. Mark story point L1, please. Done. As you make your way back to the campfire, you feel something small strike the top of your head. It's a small wooden statuette. You look up at the branches of the great oak and notice a number of small pages and other trinkets tied to branches or resting on tree limbs. You gain... The Wooden Trinket, item B. So now we have an item, which is the first to come up. And uh, items are interesting. Why don't you guys explain that? So the way items work, some of them are story-driven items, something that you're going to be using later on. Then there are other items, such as item A, the Healing Potion, which you may use on your character to heal stamina during an adventure. So just to cover the wooden trinket, what it says is, you found this intricate wooden trinket at the Great Oak in Eventide Forest. It looks quite old. A heart is carved into the wood containing the letters T and U. So this is a story item based on what we can see from the card. And as Tammy is the one that went up the tree, she's the one that found it, Tammy has now put it on her item list. Exactly. You return to the campfire and show the trinket to your companions. 
What do you make of it? asks Braxton. I'm not sure, says Miriam. I think this was carved by a human or an orc. Too rough to be made by an elf. Probably just some harmless local custom. Miriam tosses the trinket back to you. Read entry 8549. Beautiful. So we are moving along. Here we go. Thank you. You assist Braxton in gathering some kindling and start a small campfire a few paces from the great oak. While you work, you can hear Miriam humming softly to herself. You set out your bedroll and relax. Although you're all tired, a brief chat around the campfire is not an unwelcome event. So we have three choices. Ask Miriam what she plans to do in Dragonholt. Requires story point N3. We have okay. that. Does not exhaust activation. Ask Braxton what she plans to do in Dragonholt. Requires story point E7. You don't have that. Okay. Or go straight to sleep. We don't need anything for that. And uh, it will exhaust um, our activation token. So do we want to spend time? Or do we just want to crash and move the story along? Ragnar would crash because he's uncomfortable around most people. However, I am with my traveling companions and will defer to them. I also do believe that gaining more knowledge about people is valuable based on what happened to my village in the past. But I'm not going to really decide. I'm totally comfortable with either. What do you think, Tammy? I still like some uh, good adventure stories and whatnot, so maybe finding out a little bit more about Mariam's time and what she plans to do in Dragonholt. Okay, so let's... And he did say Kyber's nosy, so he'd probably want to know what's going on. Could help out with a great story. Kyber is nosy, but at the same time, Kyber was a little bit miffed before when he started talking about himself and Braxton was basically just humoring him and going, <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. So Kyber's just kind of in a pissy mood now. Says, you know what, I'm just going to sleep. So that's that's what he would want to do. So it seems like it's two for going to sleep and one forget to know, so I guess we're going to sleep. Do you want me to take the action first or do you want to take the action first this time? Oh, go ahead, Kyber. You can take the action. I'm a, I'm a little bit... Right. Ragnar's a little bit more flexible. He he He's the type that he would go to sleep but still listen, if you know what I mean. Okay. So Kyber is going to go to sleep. So we mark story point H3 on our tracker. Done. And then we will go to entry 1096. Here we go. Mariam lets out a long yawn, and you second the motion. As you nestle into your bedroll for the night, Braxton speaks up. Best we don't all sleep at once. I'll take the first watch. Can I count on you to take the second? You nod your agreement and drift off to sleep. One of you must volunteer to keep watch. Refresh your activation token if you are keeping watch. The rest of you exhaust your activation token. Two time passes and you each recover to stamina. So... The the most logical person to take watch would be Rygar, the wildlander who has spent many nights watching for dangerous animals in the woods. Indeed. It's not a bad idea. I've already exhausted my activation token, mm-hmm. so you get to go, and the only one who will have to spend his is Tammy. That's it. So I will exhaust because we are going to sleep, effectively. Correct. And uh, Rygar also doesn't want to watch Tammy try to snuggle up with her boo. Oh. You rouse from your slumber to gentle coaxing from Braxton. Your turn to watch, she says quietly. You rub your eyes for a moment and sit up, taking a drink from your canteen to wake yourself. You glance around camp at your fellow travelers. Braxton prepares her bedroll, lies down, and is quickly asleep. Miriam stirs for a moment, possibly awakened by the brief commotion, and rolls to her other side. A gentle silence takes hold of the clearing. Before I continue, you did note the two-time passing, correct? I did, yes. Very good. Your journey to Dragonholt has been a long one, but now you are no more than a half day's travel from your destination. Hooray! We're we're excited and looking forward to getting to the village. I really want to get to uh, this nice inn. Yep. I like some dwarven wine. I spend way way too much time in the woods. (laughs) Absolutely. The crack of burning branches from the campfire keeps you company as you keep watch. The moon is beginning to set, and you know the light of a new dawn will soon grace the forest clearing where you have made camp. Just then, you hear a rustling in the thick brush on one side of the camp, Mm -hmm. and recall Braxton's warnings about bandits. 
And then we have three options. Maybe it was a good thing we heard about the bandits. Watch for further movement or signs of danger. Arm yourself and take a closer look. This option does not exhaust your activation token. Or wake your fellow traveling companions. Now. As a stealthy wildlander, I am going to investigate. I am fully confident on my abilities to investigate the situation. So you are going to let us sleep and you're going to investigate. Yes. Is that what I am understanding? Yes, I am. Can we all agree it's about to go down? It's entirely possible, but at this point, we're sleeping. We don't get a say in this. So, Rygar, flip your token. And then no, it all... does not exhaust my activation token. That's right. You're correct. That's why I'm going to investigate, because I will still have another action. Okay. So, we go to entry 1654. And as we're getting into an exciting part of the story, and the Cyberbot has been doing a fantastic job on the narration, we're just going to take a break so we can get prepared to do this in a very exciting fashion. And we're back. So let's continue on with entry number 1654. You grab your weapon and slip out of the camp, circling around towards where you heard the sound. As your eyes adjust to the darkness, you move silently from tree to tree and soon find yourself behind a small group of rough-looking people lurking in the bushes and watching your camp. Bandits. Mark story point X1, if you please. X1. So my compatriots were wise to learn about the bandits. That's right. I don't know if they want to kill us, but they definitely want our stuff. Probably. There are three bandits directly in front of you. Two men and a woman in torn and stained clothing and scraps of leather armor. That doesn't sound dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> the woman holds an, a strong bow across her knees as she crouches, while one of the men has a spear and the other a long knife in his hand. Wasn't someone on watch by the fire? Asks one of the men. I don't see anyone there now, says the woman. Quiet, says the other man. Wait for the signal. They clearly haven't noticed you. Just as clearly, they're intending to attack your traveling companions. That's no good. That's not good, Rygar. That is not good. No. So, we have three options. Shout a warning to your traveling companions. Draw your weapon and engage the bandits or sneak up on the bandits and ambush them, which requires the stealth skill. As I am a very stealthy wildlander oh, cat oh. folk, I am going to ambush the bandits and prove my worth to the party. Hopefully. Hopefully. Let's see what happens. Excellent. Now we will read entry 8408, and we are all going to flip our tokens back now. Yes. Which is good. It's about to go down. Oh, yes. 8408. You creep carefully up behind the bandits, ghosting up behind the man with the spear. Moving swiftly, you grab his spear and twist, tearing it from his grasp and bringing it up across his throat. He gurgles and kicks, then goes still as you drag him into the dark forest. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> There's one of them in the trees, shouts the bow-armed woman, loosing an arrow blindly in your direction. The shaft passes within a hand's breadth of your head, and you see her pulling back to fire again. You drop your unconscious captive and sprint back to the camp. You hear confusion in the forest all around you as the bandits try to track you down. Read entry 9943. So, Rygar is doing a very good job right now. I agree. I think this was the proper way to go about it. Absolutely. You shout a warning and rush back into the camp, hearing the bandits swear and move to follow you. We're supposed to wait for the signal, hisses one. That was the signal, shouts the other. As you skid to a stop by the campfire, you see Braxton already on her feet, with her shield in hand. Marion is still staggering out of her tangling blanket. Well, what is it, grumbles Marion. What's going on? <laughs> Bandits, rumbles Braxton, as a half dozen of the desperate-looking figures run into the firelight, weapons held high. Read entry 4300. Oh, it's going down, boys and girls. 4,300. Braxton hefts a heavy steel shield and slashes her longsword threateningly at one of the approaching bandits. Marion produces two flasks and unstoppers one of them. A thick, acrid smoke pours from its open mouth as she holds it aloft, ready to throw. Three of the bandits suddenly rush forward, charging the camp. Mariam hurls the smoking flask, which smashes against one of their bucklers. A 
billowing cloud of acidic fog erupts from the impact site. The bandit shrieks and flails, dropping his buckler to the ground as it dissolves. That's pretty intense. That's pretty yeah. cool. That's why you like having apothecaries around. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. The two other bandits continue their charge. One swings an axe at Merriam, but Braxton catches the blade with her longsword and slams her shield into the man, sending him tumbling to the ground. The third bandit dodges around Braxton and darts forward straight toward you, spear point trained at your chest. So this can be any one of us at this yep. point in time. Correct. So we have a few options. Dodge the attack. Catch the spear and disarm the bandit. Deflect the spear and counterattack. Or blast the bandit with a rune. So the basic entries are dodge and catch the spear. Or if you really want to be more intense, you've got dueling or military or arcana or runes. I have dueling. Yep. You have arcana. Do you have any combat skills? I do, but not any of the ones that match there. I would most likely dodge the attack based on my ability with agility and stealth and endurance. Do you think that we should be particularly vicious with this bandit? I, I don't like bandits. I don't like people preying on people. And, well, this is not my force, but if it was with the force that I lived in, mm -hmm. I would be like, no, you're done. So does Kyber shish kebab him? Or does Tammy blast him to bits? I think I, you get shish kebab. I think the shish kebab is probably the best thing. I like shish kebab. It's very tasty. Perfect. Kyber pulls out his rapier, deflects the spear, and counterattacks. We will be entering entry 8427. 8247? 8427. Yep. With instincts born of long training, you brace yourself, readying to parry the incoming thrust and counterattack. As long as you don't slip up, you can drop the bandit in a single attack. If you have agility or athletics, read entry 9608. Kyber does. He has agility. So Let's go. this is just a perfect example as to going back to some of our previous videos as to why you would want some synergies with your skills. If you'd only had dueling and nothing to back it up, it might not have gone so well for Kyber. Correct. As in uh, one of our original playthroughs, <coughs> Taserface learned the hard way. Oh yeah. Poor Taserface. So there's a reason why he's gone. Yeah, thank God. So entry 9608 says here, you swing your weapon to deflect the spear, knocking the lethal point aside and following up with a riposte. Your attack catches the bandit off guard and leaves him bleeding on the grass. You step back, taking a moment to assess the situation. If story point H3 is marked, has it been marked? Yes. Read entry 6577. That's for learning about the bandits. Come in handy, maybe. Maybe. As your companions do battle, with the oncoming bandits, you take a moment to take stock of the camp. You see an orc woman holding a bow, sneaking around to approach from the rear, her form difficult to make out in the dim light from your fire. Soon your companions will be fighting on two fronts. So we have a lot of options here. So you can rush the lone bandit, put yourself between the archer and your companions, shoot an arrow at the bandit, which requires archery. Does anybody have this? Yes. So that's one option. You can blind the woman with a flash of runic light, which... Do you have runes? I don't have runes. Okay, so that's not an option. You can sneak around the great oak and catch her from behind, which requires reasoning or stealth, mm -hmm. which you have. Yes. Or you can sing a bardic song to inspire your companions, which requires performance, uh, which you do have. Which I do have, actually. So do you want to inspire your companions? Do you want to shoot an arrow at the bandit? What shall we do here? Do or we take the aggressive? About it. That's right. Do we? It, it's do a shame that Kyber has just skewered a bandit and is in no position to sing because we'd all love to hear his fantastic voice. We can. I have a performance. Yes, but I'm saying it'd be more fitting if Kyber was doing it. But that does not mean I could do just as good of a job. We're singing. Okay. All right. We're all singing. right. So Tammy has taken it upon herself to start singing. We're reading entry eight two four nine. Just to note, I Tammy's, hope this works out. Just to note, Tammy's voice has cleared out entire taverns in Nericol, hey, if I'm not hey, mistaken. Hey, Kyber did his best with her, but there's only so much she can do. Is that why she calls you Boo all the time? Let's not go there. <laughs> 8249, you begin to sing, choosing the triumph moment from the Ballad of Felidir's Fall. 
Your voice is strong and clear, and you soon hear Miriam joining in with a surprisingly pure mezzo-soprano. My sister found another mister. <laughs> Has story point N3 been marked? Yes. Please mark story points M3 and Z2. M3 and Z2. Your companions move smoothly in time with the music, as if engaged in a carefully rehearsed dance. Braxton, perhaps energized by your song, steps forward and cuts down the lurking orc bandit without missing a beat. I love that orc. You each recover two stamina. Has anybody lost lost stamina? No! Because we're bad ass! That's right. (laughs) So, well balanced party. We now read entry 9513. Woohoo! Let's see what happens next. For collar and harmon, bellows Braxton. In the flickering firelight, she seems a demon from a nightmare, huge and dark and powerful. Three of the bandits attempt to surround her, but she pivots away, slamming her shield into one and knocking her down, then slashing at a second and sending him screaming into the dark, clutching at his face. She trades blows with a large human, um, his axe sliding off her shield, her sword flickering past his face as he dances backwards. You notice a bandit with his hair in a long braid creeping up behind Braxton with a knife glimmering in his hand. Focused as Braxton is on her battle with the large bandit, she clearly hasn't noticed. So we have three choices here. You can intercept the approaching bandit, catch the bandit from behind, or stop the bandit with an alchemical concoction, which requires alchemy. Now you're the only one to act, Rygar, so... You don't have alchemy, correct? I do not have alchemy. So will you intercept the bandit or catch the bandit from behind? I will intercept the bandit because I'm agile and quick, so I'm not sure I'd be able to quite catch him from behind. A fine choice. So we will go to 5517 and proceed. And we're going to just take a quick break right here as we set up to continue our battle with the bandit. Hope you're enjoying it. And we're back. Yep. So, what are so, you guys thinking so far? It's good. I'm really enjoying this. We got a great party. I'm liking the dynamics that we got going on. This is the first time, I think, that we've played through where we haven't lost stamina up to this point yet, which is quite interesting. Yes. Well, we're pretty balanced. Yes. Oh, yeah. We've got the social skills under control and a bit of combat. You've got some of the magic and some of the social skills. Absolutely. Yeah. And like I don't have no social skills, but I've got the utility and the combat skills, so that's where... Really, Rygar comes into play. Again, a good time to point out, check out our character creation guide, because it will help you develop those characters. Please yes. do. All right, let's continue with so, entry 5517. And yep. refresh the tokens, because... Yep. We've all made a decision, so we're going to refresh correct. our tokens. All right. The entry reads, You leap forward and shout a challenge to the braid-wearing bandit, who spins and sneers at you with a crooked tooth. The bandit brandishes a knife, and you begin to circle one another warily. I'll gut you like a bloated fish, he shrieks, and hurls himself at you. His attack is clumsy, more passionate than skilled, and you soon see your opportunity. If you have brawling or dueling, do you have these? I do not. Whoa. Otherwise, read entry 4585. Spoke too soon. Let's see. You grab the braided bandit from behind, twist, and pivot him around your hips, sending him tumbling to the ground with an undignified yowl. As he struggles to stand, you plant one foot on his back and shove, sending him sprawling yet again, this time into your campfire. He screams and shoots to his feet, running in random loops as he attempts to beat the flames out of his hair and clothing. He staggers into another bandit, sending both sprawling, and then you shift your attention elsewhere. Pretty cool. So, you don't always have to have the required skill to still do something cool. That's right. You never know. It might turn out better. It might turn out worse. I think that turned out pretty good. This one. Four, five, four, five. Four, five, eight, five. Sorry. I done goofed. All All right. right. So. So now you know what could have happened. (laughs) Let's see what actually happened. There you go. All right. We can just. uh, No, no, no. No, no. no, Keep it going. Continue. Just continue. It's okay to goof up sometimes. So. Let's rewind here. 
You grab up a burning brand from the nearby campfire, but before you can use it for anything, the bandit slashes at you with his knife, cutting open a ragged tear across your chest. Ouch! Rygard. Rygard took four points of stamina loss. Ouch. That's quite a bit. You swing your burning branch over your head and thrust it at the bandit, sending him leaping backward with a squawk. He jabs out with his knife, preventing you from following up and finishing him off. Behind him, you see Braxton slam her shield solidly into her assailant, then spin and bring her sword down on the braided bandit. He shrieks, then falls, and Braxton turns back to the axe-wielding brute without a word. So, this actually turned out well, because the guy got cut down with a sword, as opposed to before, where we just kind of burned him a bit and sent him tumbling. Mm -hmm. So, Rygar took some damage, but... That guy is not getting up anytime soon. And this is why you want to play in character, because Rygar loves his party members, so Rygar would jump in and save the day. He took one for the team. Absolutely. Now we will read entry 2004. It's the correct entry this time. Yes. (laughs) 2004. Oh, and we have a decision. Your oh, companions boy. are still locked in combat with the bandits who swarm around the edges of the light provided by your campfire. Screaming incoherently, a scarred bandit rushes at you. In one hand, he brandishes a studded iron mace. The other arm ends in a steel hook, its metal glinting in the firelight. So, okay, Mr. Hookhand, we can rush forward to engage the bandit... We can brace yourself to receive the charge, which requires military. You can flee and attack at range, which requires arcana, archery, or thievery. This does not exhaust your activation token. Or you can protect yourself with an alchemical mixture, which requires alchemy. So who would like to take this one? I'm I'm thinking we either go to range, because we've got two of us that can attack at range, or you've got the alchemical mixture, which would give Tammy a chance to shine. So Tammy doesn't want to mess play with, with no, her. No, well, I can do it. I, I do. I definitely want to try alchemy. So, so go for it. I'm saying we do so one or the other. So, do you want to do it, or I'll do? Unless you want to try something else. No, you you played your turn. No, no, this was from before. No, no, he, he, he doesn't. We're refreshed. We're all fresh now. But didn't he try to catch the guy from behind, and then that no, was all the but same that action? Was just, that was all the same. Uh, action. Okay, cool. All right, I, I want to use alchemy. I want to play with some fire. All right, so flip it over, Tammy. Let's play alchemy. Hooray! So we are going to read entry 4340. 4340! Let's do it. And here we are. You reach to a belt pouch to retrieve a mixture that will stop the approaching bandit in his tracks, but the bandit's charge is faster than you thought, and you fumble with the flap. I was afraid of that. In a moment, the bandit is upon you, his mace held high. Do you have the agility skill? I do not, so I'm going to take some damage. Uh Uh-oh. So now we will read entry 8374. So once again, you can refer to our character creation video and see why you kind of want to have some physical skills. But don't worry, you will be able to skill up your character and gain more skills in this game. There you go. You pull a glass vial from your pouch, but to your dismay, it is no more than a mundane mixture not yet ready for use. The bandit swings his mace clipping you on the shoulder and spinning you around. He swings again and catches you in the gut, knocking the breath from you. Oh! You lose four stamina. No, that's okay. You stagger back, and as he raises his mace a third time, you aim a kick at his knee. You feel his knee give out with a satisfying crunch and smash the glass flask against the side of his head, showering the surrounding area with shards of glass and glistening liquid. The bandit falls over, shrieking and clutching at his knee with his good hand and his face with a sharpened hook. You wonder if he might accidentally do more damage to himself than you did. <laughs> well, you live, you learn. How does he go to the bathroom? You know, that, that, I, I really that, don't be know. Be careful. But this might be the origin of Taser Face. There you go. <laughs> Read entry 2399. Here we go. You find yourself standing in a loose circle with your companions and no bandits close at hand. Even more of the enemy emerge from the trees, however, and they begin to surround you. Jesus, there's too many of these guys. What now, breathes Marion? You're sure it's the first time you've heard fear in her voice. The bandit's leader chuckles and speaks, causing the firelight to play off the long scar on the side of his face in a sinister way. Of course he has a long scar on the side of his face. 
Bandit so leaders always do. Bandit leader 101. Scarred somewhere, missing a hand. You know, they all just want to look cool, but they really just look dirty. It's, okay. it's the initiation. Drop your valuables and leave. There's no need for you to die here. The other bandits hoot and howl and brandish their blades and axes in the air in front of you. Braxton glances sideways at you. There are too many of them. We cannot win this fight. She edges backwards, and you notice her lean in the direction of Dragonholt. You can't have my gold. I'll be using it to start my business, hisses Mary. <laughs> Despite the bite in her words, you notice her hands trembling. So we have a few options here. You can fend off the bandits long enough for the others to escape. This requires brawling, dueling, or military. So I can delay... You can create a diversion and flee towards Dragonholt, which requires deception or performance. So there's another thing that I can do, and mm -hmm. Tammy can do, but Tammy's out of this I'm one. Out for this decision. Create a smoke screen and escape towards Dragonholt, which also would require Tammy. That's what I would have used. Or my turn tail and run. Now, you can turn tail and run. I'm actually the one that's going to have to do any of these other options. I, I, I think you should deceive them. You think I should create a diversion? Well, I mean, uh, with that gorgeous voice, the the locks. I mean, you can put on a great enough performance that could distract them. I mean, you, you are just a. a this is this bottom. is the time for for the bard to come out and start Barding. creating the distraction. <laughs> Look at me. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to create a diversion. So we're going to flip this, and we're going to read entry five two eight zero. So Kyber is taking the lead here. 5280. Right there. Using the darkness to your advantage, you throw your voice. Oh, he's a ventriloquist. <laughs> Making it sound as if soldiers are approaching through the trees. The village guards, yells one bandit. Here, leg it, lads. It's a trick, you credulous clods, bellows the bandit leader. Wow, he's got quite the vocabulary. <laughs> but you for a scarred man. Seriously, yeah, yeah. it's a guy who hangs around in the woods stealing from people and he can speak like that. He's, he's missed his calling, clearly. It just goes to show you, do not judge a book by its cover. Stay in school, kids. <laughs> the panic that ripples through his minions is enough for you and your companions to slip away. After them! So they're still giving chase, but we managed to escape. And we will go to entry 3645. So, as we've now escaped the bandits, we're going to take a quick break and get set up, and we'll continue with our harrowing escape as we try to make it to the village. We'll be right back. And we're back. We have escaped the bandits' loquacious leader, and we are trying to get away from them and hopefully get to the village. Fantastic. So we are now at entry 3645. You run through even time forest, scrambling and stumbling as you go. You are surprised to discover that you can see, and you realize that the sun must already be rising somewhere beyond the trees. Time passes. The narrow and twisting path soon comes to a steep climb, with a rocky outcropping that rises above on either side. A large standing stone towers to your right. You can hear the bandits still coming behind you, shouting to their fellows like hounds on the hunt. But any pursuer will have to scramble up the same narrow gulch. So we have a few options here. Yep, we Ryder is the only one that can act. Correct. We can tip over the standing stone to block the path. You can fire with your bow from the high ground, which requires archery. Yep. How perfect. Or we can set a trap for the approaching bandits, which requires survival. Perfect. You know what? I'd rather be more crafty because, you know, I've been in the wild a long time and while shooting arrows at bandits is fun, I'm more concerned about my companions as well. So we're going to set a trap to try to really slow them down. That's a great idea. I agree. Let's flip back our tokens now as we've all acted. Yep. And we'll proceed to the next entry, which is 3575, which is on the same page. You quickly make a set of snares that you tether to young trees at the top of the gulch. Then you cover them with a handful of leaves and gravel. Don't you you stupid bandits. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You urge your companions on and fall back as the bandits grow closer, hooting and baying as they come. Their shouts turn to cries of alarm as you hear the first of your snares yank a bandit off his feet. I'm picturing this all now, hiding behind <laughs> a tree, going, hee, 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 
as we watch this occur. And I, I can like, just see us, as, as you see Rygar holding Tammy back, she's like, I can finally throw my alchemy, I can finally throw it. Like, no, save it for later. I have Looney Tunes running through my head and say, Please. It's a very Wily e. Coyote moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only we actually succeeded. There you go. So now we go to entry 5129. With the bandits preoccupied by your efforts back at the Gulch, you're able to gain a considerable lead on them. Excellent. The rocky terrain continues to rise up around you, the trees of Eventide Forest becoming smaller and scrappier as you go. Soon, you come to a sheer cliff face, only a few scraggly trees clinging to the rocks rising above you. Sunlight spills across the sky above the cliff, a promise of freedom and safety. You could climb up to the top, but it would be a challenge. The path continues to the left a fair distance, then becomes a tight switchback, crawling up to the top of the rise. It would be a safer route to the top, but slower than climbing directly. So do we climb the cliff face, or do we run for the switchback path? I can probably help everyone climb up the cliff face, or we can keep running to the pass as well. Neither requires a skill, so it's do we take the potentially more dangerous route and risk screwing it up, or do we take the longer route and have less risk? What I would say is none of us have athletics. No, that, that that is true. So maybe we run, and I'll maybe can make the decision to run because uh, I've got agility, survival, and endurance. Kyber would be more for the switchback path, given the circumstances. Okay. We have a lead on those bandits, so I think that might be the best way to go. So let's run, and Ryar will, will lead the charge as we run down the pass because he's Very the most good. agile. So we read entry 9716. It's quite far in. So, you sprint for the switchback trail, covering the distance in short order. Braxton swings Mariam over her shoulder without breaking stride. The gnome contents herself with a single squawk of protest. <laughs> when you reach the bottom of the switchback, you're already out of breath. You each lose two stamina unless you have the endurance skill. So, do you so, have endurance? As you notice, I have endurance, which means that you each does not apply, so no one loses any stamina. Are you sure? Yes. Excellent. Okay. That's why it goes, you each lose unless you. You refers to the active player that made the decision. You ah. each would be the consequence to everyone based mm -hmm. on the skills of the active Very player. Very interesting. Cool. You start to climb, but haven't reached the first turning when the bandits emerge from the trees. Hollering like hounds on the scent, they rush after you. Two of their number fall back, knocking arrows and launching them in your directions. You each lose three stamina unless you have agility. Do you have agility? I have agility. Amazing. This is fantastic. By the time you reach the top of the slope, your lungs and legs are burning and you're gasping for breath. But you can't rest now. The bandits are still too close behind you. So, we have a few things that we can do. We can throw rocks at the bandits. We can return fire with the bow, which is not an option. No. We can block the path behind us, which requires awareness or survival. Do you have awareness? I have survival. That's an option then. Or we can blast the path with runic magic, which requires arcana or runes. Oh, I think we want to blast. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. I think I we like blast. As soon as I saw blast, I knew Tab was going to be like, oh, yes. I got arcana. Let's blast. All right. All right. Unless you read... disagree. No, go, I think that that's ahead. pretty cool. It, Let's it's read... thematic to this party. This is what we would do. Let's read entry 3967. I'm going to lose all my stamina for doing that. Watch. <laughs> Watch. <laughs> Maybe not. You produce a blasting rune from an interior pocket and calmly bend the energy within to your will. You extend a phantom limb toward the rocks below and, with clenched fist, impact the cliff face. Stones and earth shatter and fly, showering the climbing bandits with rocky shrapnel. A great cloud of dirt and dust covers the path below, causing the bandits to cough and sputter. Soon the bandits are running from the cloud, retreating into the forest. You have escaped. Tiny yes! That's fury. awesome. Tiny yeah, I'm, I'm totally... I'm totally picturing something like out of Street Fighter right now, which is like a glowing fist in the rock, like, yeah! Hadouken! <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, Please don't sue me, Capcom. <laughs> All right. so, as, we've, uh, as we've escaped the bandits, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to reset for uh, the scene as we approach Dragon Old Village, I'm guessing, from uh, where we are. 
we will be entering scene 9,999, which will bring us to our close. Cool. All right. So we'll be right back. See you soon. And we're back. And now we are going to read the final entry, 9,999. Yes. So I don't know why they don't, they don't just make them... Like I mean, there's there's entries that have like random numbers. Like there's there's I, I think it makes sense in their system. Fantasy Flight maybe had an idea for different about adventures. Maybe I I chance. think so. But we the one thing that we haven't seen yet is that as you go into the other books, mm-hmm. they have different they have other entry numbers as well. So I'm ah. wondering if we if it's related to the entire system overall has x amount of entries and then maybe in another book you'll get mm. like 9898 nine, eight will be in another book for which is reason. quite impressive if you think about it that yeah. means it's a pretty complex narrative system yes. so very cool nice. let's continue on as the sun climbs above the trees you continue your journey towards dragonholt at your new elevation the trees are smaller and farther apart and at some point you have passed an invisible barrier where you are not in a forest so much as a rocky plain with occasional trees. Dragonholt lies below you, and you can see the beacon tower rising above the trees, the sun climbing the sky behind it. You have less than an hour of walking before you. Time passes. Almost there. At length, you walk through an orchard, the twisted trees heavy with fruit and propped up by weathered boards and poles. Then you find yourself on Dragonholt's main street, walking beneath the dueling dragon statues that serve as the closest thing to a city gate. One dragon is carved from black stone, the other from white, and they arch across the street above you, not quite touching. If only they had a pair of dice. (laughs) Marvelous, breathes Braxton. Some sort of memorial to the dragon wars, says Marion. This way, she says, and skips down the cobbled street as if she hadn't been woken in the middle of the night by bandits. If you want to learn more about the Dragon Wars, you can see Fantasy Flight's other game set in the Runebound universe, or their upcoming Terranoth sourcebook for the new Genesis role-playing game system. Something that, if uh, we like, we might bring the Cyberbard on, and we'll see what we can do with it. You never know. Could be good. You cross a crowded village green that is laid out before a garden shrine with a domed glass ceiling. In front of the shrine stands a marble spire, atop which burns a beacon fire. That rhymed. (laughs) Then you pass a building dark with soot and marred by broken windows. Mariam pauses at an intersection and peers down two side streets before nodding vigorously and leading the way south. We'll get a proper breakfast as soon as we find my aunt's inn, she says. It's called the Swan. Does it have a lovely white swan painted on its sign? asks Braxton. (laughs) Yes, it does, says Mariam. Then, is that it just there? She points, and Mariam beams. That's it! Let's go! She rushes off in a fresh burst of energy, leaving you stumbling along behind. When you finally reach the swan, you find Mariam babbling excitedly to a gnome who looks almost exactly like her, plus 20 years. How would that look on a gnome? I I really don't know. How how would that look like? A little bit wrinkly, I don't know. Wrinkly gnomes. Hmm. Wrinkly gnomes. You must be Mariam's friends, says the older woman. I'm Mariam's aunt, Sapphire. It's good to meet you. That's a stripper name. (laughs) She welcomes you inside, and you step down into a blessedly cool, half-sunken common room, where a scattering of thick oak tables and sturdy chairs lie beneath rafters strung with herbs and root vegetables. Thick iron lanterns rest on each table, none lit now, and light streams in from tall windows against the south wall. Please, have a seat, says your host. And you do. We made it, says Braxton, dropping heavily into a chair that creaks under her weight. I think I could sleep for a week. None of that, says Marion. We have work to do. Braxton lifts her head and glares. That orc is going to eat that gnome. (laughs) Starting tomorrow, I guess. Let's all take today off. Marion vanishes into a back room then appears a few minutes later with a tray rattling with glass bottles of red liquid. Here, she says, and distributes the bottles. It's the least I can do for helping getting me here safely. You gain three healing potions. Distribute these potions amongst yourselves as you choose. One, one, one. Yeah, I think that makes the most sense. Perfect. Care to tell the viewers about healing potions? Healing potion, as it says on the card, is... Ooh, it's actually interesting. The liquid burns your throat like bitter fire, but quickly heals open wounds and broken bones. And when you whiskey, scotch, scotch. 
When you drink this potion, you recover half of your maximum stamina, which means my maximum stamina would be 10. Uh, so therefore, if I were to drink this potion, I would recover five stamina points. If you didn't take as many skills as my character, your maximum might be more, and therefore you would benefit more from the healing potion. That's right. So it's good to hang on to and may not be beneficial to quaff it too early. Exactly. As we've already seen, when certain things happen, you have the opportunity during the story to regain stamina. So use your healing potions wisely. An important thing to note as well is that giving an item to another player or drinking the potion does not exhaust your activation token. Good point. Excellent. Sapphire returns a moment later with a larger tray overflowing with plates of yellow eggs, loaves of dark brown bread, mm -hmm. and a tall pitcher of milk. You're thinking about the stripper name, weren't you? I'm thinking about Eleven Seas right now. <laughs> Eleven Seas. <laughs> I hope you'll stay at the Swan for as long as you like, she says. No charge, of course. Not after what you went through to get my Mariam here safely. Mariam pours everyone a glass of milk. She holds hers aloft and exclaims, To new roads! Yay! To new roads! Mm. Ah. Braxton takes a glass, holds it up, and looks from Mariam to Sapphire to you. To new friends. Oh. Yep. Braxton. The meal is amazing, and you soon collapse in rooms provided by your generous host. You doze through the majority of the day. After dinner, you rest in the common room, chatting idly with Braxton and another patron. Soon, the lack of a good night's sleep is too much, and you retire to your room. You will have to explore Dragonholt on the morrow. Yep. And to resolve this adventure... You each recover half of your maximum stamina, so I'm back to full health. Me too. You so each, is my guard? You each recover one skill, okay? Well, yes. nothing. So that would be happened is at a certain damage level, and we would have to just verify with the rules, your skills can be disabled. So if and you lose stamina, you don't die. If you, let's say we have 10, I lose 10 stamina, I don't necessarily die. I would just disable one of correct. my skills. That's all. Yes. Which is not a good thing because it takes away your options and then things get very tricky. Correct. You each refresh your activation token. Hooray! You each gain one experience point. XP. Your fame increases by one. And this quest is complete. Read entry 1001 in the Dragon Holt Village book. Yes. But so, that is a story for another day. Yes, that is a story for another day. So I hope you have enjoyed our playthrough of Legacy of Dragon Holt. The one thing I just want to highlight is the fame mechanic. The fame mechanic is a mechanic that is used in most of the runebound games, it really affects sort of what you can buy. If those of you that are familiar with the Sans Second Edition, especially uh, with the app version, the co-op version, the more fame you have, the better the items you get. So just, just think about that as you're playing the game. The more fame and the good deeds that you can potentially do will definitely make you a lot stronger as the game goes forward. And with that, we're going to cut and we will be right back. So thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope that you enjoyed our playthrough of Two New Roads. We plan to continue playing Legacy of Dragon Old, and hopefully we're going to get through the entire game. So if you liked what you saw, please comment, please subscribe, and we'll keep bringing you some great content. Uh, we also want to give a nice hat tip to our good friend, the Cyber Bar. Thank you very much for being our narrator today. It That's was a pleasure. pleasure. Uh, playing with you and yeah. you know, we're gonna put his links also down there So please subscribe to the cyber Bart's channel and more importantly tell the good folks what you do I make YouTube videos of let's plays of a variety of narrative and story driven games and uh, Coming up. I'll also be making videos related to arts and culture book reviews and such but uh, That's coming in the future for now. Let's play videos think telltale think Skyrim that kind of stuff, it's coming along quite nicely. Give me a subscribe and a like, much appreciated. Thank you very much for stopping by with these fine guys. Yep. And from us at Dice and Dragons, as always, grab your buddy and keep playing games. Keep playing games.